Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're gonna to talk about good and bad habits when it comes to taking care of your soldering iron tips. All right, so before we actually get started here, we're gonna go over some of the bad habits that I'm seeing people doing because these habits themselves are causing people to spend significant amounts of money buying tips every single month. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I've had the same set of tips for almost a year. And, you know, I solder every day. I solder every single day. And my tips are in fantastic condition. I'm talking about like, I know that they are gonna work absolutely perfectly every single day. Why? Because I follow a very precise procedure when I use them, okay? So let's go over some of the no-nos real quick. And I'm not gonna make a huge long list. While there could be an extra long list, I'm just gonna go over some of the major ones that I see people doing, okay? Number one, don't bend your tips. Just, just stop. Stop bending your tips because I know that you have one tip and I know that you see things on the internet that show, you know, other shaped tips and you're thinking, hmm, I could just bend that. Well, unfortunately, when you bend a soldering iron tip, it can create micro fractures in the actual tip itself, which could seriously degrade the life of your soldering iron tip, causing you to pay more for them. Don't do it, okay? Number two. Don't shave the tips, okay? If, if it's too far gone, it's too far gone. Don't, don't try and do anything extra on there because what's gonna happen is the solder itself will just start eating up the side of your soldering iron. It'll just go all the way up, no big deal. It'll be you buying some more soldering irons, okay? And the next one here, I mean, sometimes you think things are common sense, but they're not, okay? Um, but I think the common sense factor comes with understanding and I think a lot of people just don't understand. And they don't understand that when a tip is too far oxidized, it's just not gonna work, okay? I mean, I've seen instances where people are trying to learn on soldering iron tips that are completely you know, oxidized to the point where the, the tip itself is just done. Like it's just not possible to solder it on anymore. And that's a big deterrent for people trying to learn because they don't, they don't know any better. They just think that they don't know how to do it and they're not doing it right. When in reality, soldering is a very, very easy thing to do that if practiced, you can become very skilled at very quickly, okay? Um, that brings me to my next little thing here, which brings us over into the whole like actual like proper process. And I'm not sure if anybody's ever heard of it, but there's something called cold welding in a vacuum, okay? It's where two like metals or two like materials um, will come together and if they're in a vacuum and there's nothing in between them, they will atomically just become one, okay? It's like cold welding in space. Look it up, it's a big problem for astronauts. Um, but with that being said, that is exactly what we're trying to do here. We are trying to take two different metals and we're trying to force them together, okay? But we come across something called oxidation. Oxidation is the enemy, okay? Not only is it the enemy of your soldering, it is super the enemy of your soldering tips, okay? Um, which is one of the major reasons why we use flux, okay? Flux creates a barrier that prevents oxidation from building up between your contact joints, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, and you know, this is a very, very simple technique, is I'm just gonna show you guys what I do right before I do pretty much any joint at all, okay. When I first get, when I first turn my soldering station on in the morning, this is the very first thing I do, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. We got the Hako FM202, and if anybody in the audience knows about the FM202, you absolutely 100% know that there is no auto sleep function on this bad boy, okay. That means you have to be watching everything. If you're done, turn it off, okay. Because if you leave it on and your soldering iron is sitting there just on and on and on and on, it's just gonna keep building up heat and you know, it's just gonna oxidize more and more and more, okay? So, um, you know, definitely something to watch out for if you have a station that does not have an auto sleep feature and I know with the rise in popularity of the Hako FM202 that is suddenly $300 on eBay when I was buying them for $70 used no problem, you know, six months ago that, you know, there's a lot of new people out there that have those 202s that don't know that you need to be watching it because they don't have that auto sleep feature, 
okay? So now that we're here, let's go ahead and switch over to the other camera. And we've got two different things here, okay? We have our brass sponge and we have our tip tinner, okay? Anytime I'm gonna solder, we'll just go ahead and we're gonna put this bad boy in here. And we'll just assume that this is just me coming in in the morning and I'm, I turn it on, I've got a job in front of me, no big deal. You know, it, it, I turned it off, it cooled down. It's got a little bit of oxidation built up. Remember I was talking about those cold welds where in the vacuum of space, two metals atomically just become one? Well, again, like I said, that's the goal here. We're trying to take two metals and we're trying to make them one. But we live in an oxygenated atmosphere, so we're gonna have oxygen build up on the soldering iron tip itself, which is called oxidation. Now, if you have something, a barrier, in between those two atoms, they're not gonna touch. I'm, I'm pushing together here, but they're not gonna touch. There's oxidation in the middle, okay? So the first thing that I do every single day is I take out my soldering iron as soon as it heats up and hit the sponge, okay? This sponge is, it, it pretty much just rips all the oxidation off, okay? So you're gonna get a bunch off there. Then we're gonna see our tip tinner here. Now this tip tinner is a special formula. It's, it's a little more acidic than just using flux and like solder, um, but it's amazing at cleaning off the oxidation on your tip. So we're gonna go ahead and push it down in there a little bit. And you're gonna see it's gonna melt. You're gonna take a look at it here and I bet I can show you guys in the microscope. All right, so we see that nice shiny blob right there, okay? It's right at the end, right where the solder should be. Oh, there we go. And now that I have that special, I get people call this tip refresher, uh, tip tinner, you know, it's got a couple different names. Once it's actually on there, we're gonna go switch back here now. We're just gonna come back in here with our brass sponge once again, and we're gonna get it all off, okay? Just stab it, it's no big deal. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. So we put some of the special tip tinner on here, which is his own concoction, okay? You can either do that or you can use whatever solder that you're actually using to do this. It's not a big deal. We're just tinning the tip, okay? And now let's look at it again in the microscope. Look at that, it's got a much more silvery appearance, okay? now. At this point, we don't have oxidation in between, okay? So if we don't have oxidation in between, it's gonna be a lot easier for the solder itself to touch the other solder and become one. Two like materials want to become one, okay? As long as there's nothing in the middle preventing them from being together, okay? So it's very, very simple. Anytime you've waited a little bit, okay? Let's, let's just say you're soldering for eight hours, okay? Every time you put your soldering iron back into the holder and you're doing something else, if your station's still on, it doesn't matter. If you put your handle back in the station, the next time you pull it out to do a job, this is what you're gonna do. You pull it out, clean it, tin it, clean it again, and you're gonna have yourself a really nice tip, okay? As soon as you go down to do your job, you're just gonna be like, wow, this is amazing. It just, it just flows. It works, it's nice, it's tinned, it's got a nice silvery appearance, it doesn't look all dull and degraded. Man, man, so nice. So really, that that's it. It's, it's really nothing crazy. Um, the deal is it's about building good habits and building consistency. Um, there's people out there that'll tin the tip of their soldering iron one time at the beginning of the day and then they're done. And they wonder why they are buying tips, you know, multiple times a month. They wonder why their stuff is all tore up. They wonder why they never get past a certain point with soldering. It's because they don't take care of their stuff, okay? And you just saw it. You saw it with your own eyes. It is so simple. Out, clean, tin, clean, work. No big deal.